A lot of us have started a reptile off in a 10 gallon enclosure, it eventually outgrows it, and now you're sitting with it in your basement, collecting dust. But what if there was a reptile that could live in a 10 gallon enclosure forever? Well, there is. And today we're gonna go over the top five reptiles that can live in a 10 gallon enclosure their entire life. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. First things first, I would never recommend keeping a reptile in their minimum size enclosure. So although all of these reptiles can live and live a pretty good life in a 10 gallon, you're always better off with a 20 for all these animals except for one. So let's just get into it and start it off with number five, ringneck snakes. Now the reason that ringneck snakes are number five is because they're the only one on the list that don't really make great pets. Now you can have them as pets, and there is a little bit of captive breeding going on, but most of the time if you see these in someone's collection as a pet, they probably collected it from outside, or got it from someone who did, because the breeding efforts are next to nothing. With these, they're almost non-existent. But we do see people starting to breed them more readily, just simply because people like micro pets. I wouldn't put that as a selling feature on these snakes because I think most snakes, even these guys who only top out around 30, 40 centimeters, and for those of you who don't know metric, just over a foot. <laughs> just over a foot is how big you're gonna find these guys, which kind of works because usually the idea is the snake can be the length and the width uh, combined of an enclosure and that's the minimum size. And a full grown ring snake might be actually able to stretch out the full length of a 10 gallon and still have room. So it just depends. Still, 20 gallon would probably be better, but the reason I think that ring neck snakes are gonna make some sort of resurgence or I don't know, jump in popularity is because people have figured out how to breed them. And it's funny, when I looked at the snake, I just figured, because I knew nothing about them, I figured they would be a live bearer because they're so small, but they actually do put out eggs. They are these hilarious little oblong eggs that are sized like, like the size of a dime, basically. They look hilarious. And these snakes themselves are very fragile. These are kind of the ones that you take out once in a while to take pictures of, to, to really enjoy and look at, look at in their enclosure, things like that. And because you can find them all over North America, I mean, it's probably more likely you'll be able to find them here in North America. But if you're in the UK thinking, man, that'd be really cool. Well, I imagine in years to come, we will see these more popular in the pet trade, but they're never gonna be a corn snake in terms of popularity. But if you're dead set and you want a ring neck snake, they do eat bugs. They are insectivores, which is gonna be a running theme in today's video, which is kind of cool because it's a snake that doesn't need to eat rodents. And that's a big thing for a lot of people. So you can feed them things like slugs or you can feed them things like crickets, appropriate size, or even something like grub terra, which if you want delivered right to your door, go down below, hit the link and use code WWR at checkout. I like to feed these types of grubs to a lot of my insectivores, mostly geckos and things like that, but if I had a snake that could eat them too, that'd be pretty awesome. All right, number four, and switching gears to a more arboreal 10 gallon setup, William's Blue Day Gecko, or William's Cave Gecko, or there's a bunch of different names. Legodactylus Williams Eye is the Latin, it kind of reminds me of like pterodactyl. Don't keep pterodactyls in a 10 gallon enclosure, they don't fit. Basically, it's an electric blue gecko. This gecko is like vibrant blue, as a male anyway. The females are a little bit more drab. They're like a green type of copper color. But the males, I mean, no wonder people like them. They are crazy looking. They are so bright blue, unbelievably bright blue. Now they are fast, they're critically endangered, so definitely only get these as a captive bred animal, but they are unbelievably cool to look at. And you can cohab them, and they definitely fit in a 10 gallon upright enclosure. So something like uh, an Exoterra front opening, one of the smaller ones, right? 12 by 12 by 18, would probably be a better bet. Or you can convert just a regular old, you know, 10 gallon that you buy on Craigslist for 10 bucks. That works too. But these guys are itty bitty. They only get to about three inches. Some say up to three and a half inches, which is hilariously small. Diamond is like 18 inches to give you an idea. So very, very small and they are insectivores again. So feeding them is a breeze, you know, mealworms and crickets and uh, you know, black soldier fly larva, stuff like that. So it just really works out if you have other animals who have the same diet. Well, these guys are gonna be easy to care for. And this is a gecko that would actually thrive on a 10 gallon if you had maybe one or two of them. 
So of course, bigger is better for these guys also, as long as they have enough plant cover and you can keep up the humidity and things like that. But they can actually do really well in a 10 gallon and you're not compromising as much as you would be with say a ring neck snake, which I mean, if you're getting a ring neck snake, I know I can, I said it's a 10 gallon, but throw it in a 20. I mean, it's an extra couple bucks. It'll be happier. What I find fascinating about the native population is they're found around caves in Tanzania and they only found it about an eight kilometer radius. Eight kilometers, that's nothing. That is unbelievably small. We talked last week about how hog island boas are found in a 37 mile radius and I was talking about how that's ridiculously small. Eight kilometers. I don't know why we're doing metric today. Basically that's five square miles. Five square miles, I'm pretty sure Ted Nugent owns land that's bigger than five. Like that's so crazy. Gotta have the right attitude if you wanna play rock and roll guitar, man. Just one thing before we move on, if you wanna win a free shirt, all you gotta do, hit subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment with this emoji, and like the Instagram page. That's it, four clicks and you're entered at 100,000 subscribers. We'll draw 10 free shirts no matter where you are in the world. If you, okay, you get the point, let's move on. Number three, African dwarf frogs, which of course are amphibians as they are frogs. And actually, now that I think about it, the very first amphibian or reptile I ever got, I had African dwarf frogs when I was like, 11 or 12, we had this fish tank and you can do that. You can put them in fish tanks as have them as communal fish tanks because they don't need a land area at all. In fact, they are completely aquatic frogs, very similar to an African clawed frog, but these guys stay small. African dwarf frogs are maybe the easiest amphibian you could possibly keep because the water parameters, although are important always, uh, the fluctuation doesn't hurt them as much. They're, they're hardy for sure. Not saying don't take care of your water parameters, but you definitely don't need a heater. These guys can go down to 68 degrees. I don't really know too many people who keep their home lower than that. So 68 to 78 degrees, which is a huge span. So if you live in somewhere like Canada, like where I live, and we keep our homes at around 68 in the winter, or if you live in a place like Southern Florida, where your house might be 75 all year round, or maybe even warmer, it doesn't matter. Basically everybody can keep these. And although I would never recommend it, and there will be no video for this, people say you can keep them in five gallon enclosures. I don't think so. I think 10 gallon is bare minimum for these guys. Although you could keep several of them, like maybe one or two in the same enclosure. Several means like up to three, maybe up to three in a 10 gallon. Again, I always recommend if you're starting to cohab them, you get a bigger enclosure than you actually need, but it is generally safe to keep them like that. And if you had a bigger enclosure, like maybe a 75 or 120 gallon, you could have like fish in there and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool because like we talked about in this video here, communal or community reptile tanks are amazing. And obviously this is an amphibian, but you guys get what I'm saying. Now these guys eat an insectivorous type diet also, kinda. Bloodworms and brine shrimp and things like that. So sea monkeys basically is what they eat. They can also eat pellets as well. I always recommend giving a full diet. This isn't a care guide, do your research first, obviously. Of all the things I've ever talked about on this channel, these might be the easiest critters to care for of any of them. African dwarf frogs are easy to maintain and fun to watch. These guys are amazing, bouncing up and down in the aquarium. This might be the perfect frog for you. It's not a reptile, I know. All right, number two, and because I got so much backlash in the last 10 gallon video that I didn't include enough snakes, the case brown snake is gonna make the list. I personally think, again, like the ringneck snake, you're better off with a 20 gallon, but a lot of people do keep them in tubs or like Tupperware containers. I know that Snake Discovery keeps them in something like this, and I mean, their care is exceptional, so, I think that it does work to have them in a 10 gallon or a tub system that of equivalent size. These guys are pretty cool. They're not as fragile as ringneck snakes, but they're still pretty fragile. Anything that only gets to like a foot and a half is gonna be pretty fragile. They do top out 18 to 20 inches. They are a terrestrial species, so you don't have to worry about tons and tons of height. Again, they're insectivores, which is awesome. You know, just throw in a cricket in there or feed them like a black soldier fly larva. Again, go down below if you wanna order them to your house. I think these are kind of like the best option. Snakes like this often like to eat soft bodied type critters like slugs and grubs and things like that. So. That might be your best bet here. Decay's brown snakes are another one that I actually see in my own backyard sometimes. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration. When I go for a hike, I'll see decay's brown snakes all the time. You flip over a log, boom, there they are. And it's very similar with the ringneck snakes. You flip over a log or a rock, 
and generally if you find a snake, that's what you find. It's very cool, it's very unique, they're very tiny, and the case brown snakes aren't like showstoppers when you look at them, but I just think the uniqueness is pretty amazing. They're harmless to you, even if they did bite you, you wouldn't know about it until like, you looked at it was biting you, you probably wouldn't even feel it. I think of people who might be afraid of snakes, but have the ability and the want to give the best care and the know-how and the resources, maybe something like a decays brown snake would work, as long as you're cool with how fragile they are and you can care for something like this. Because the care isn't ridiculously hard, but again, Captive bred ones are really the only ones I'd recommend, and those are pretty hard to find. So I don't know if we're gonna see them bump up in popularity, but I think it'd be pretty cool. And it'd be easier for you to find one if you decided you wanted a Decay's brown snake. Okay, let's move on to number one, and something I've never spoken about on this channel ever before, Pictus geckos, otherwise known as panther geckos, or ocelot geckos, or, I mean, there's a million different names for them. At the end of the day, they're a very unique terrestrial crepuscular species from Madagascar. So it's very unique in that, well, I think anything from Madagascar looks unique, and they do kinda sorta look like leopard geckos or African fat tail geckos, but they are smaller, four, five, maybe six inches. And if you do get a bigger one, like, this again is one of those ones I personally would keep in a 20 gallon, and I think most people should too, but there's lots of instances of people keep them in 10 gallons and having no issue. Them having a full life, breeding perfectly, no issues at all, and because they're such an easy species to maintain, I don't see why you wouldn't go up to a 20, but if you do put them in a 10, I mean, they probably do really, really well. Another one where they'll climb a little bit if you give them the opportunity, but they're mostly a terrestrial species, and they're insectivore. Again, that's kind of like the running theme for this, right? So these guys, again, crickets, uh, mealworms, doobie roaches, black soldier fly larvae, you just feed them basically the whole gamut uh, with supplements and things like that. Pictus geckos are really cheap and really easy to find. Even here in Southern Ontario, Canada, where stuff is so much more expensive than in the US or the UK even, they're like 50 bucks and people can't even sell them. Nobody wants them, they're not very popular. Maybe they will be now, I don't know. I think that they're really cool. They can be handleable, although more fragile than, don't even think about biting my ear. Although more fragile than a leopard gecko or even a cave gecko or something like that, they are handleable and they could make really great pets. So there you go. Those are your top five reptiles that could live in a 10 gallon enclosure forever. What do you think? Do you think that this was a good list? Did you realize that this was just baiting you into thinking that you can keep stuff in 10 gallons when really you should keep them into 20s? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know your idea for a video as well. I take all the ideas out of there. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get to see videos early, extra videos. We've got a couple coming up next week that Patreon only. You get discounts on the merch, things like that. And as always, you can be a patron too for $1 a month. Link in the description below. I'd really appreciate it and so would Diamond. And everyone who took the time to hit like, hit subscribe, I appreciate you. It's kind of what makes the channel go round. So thank you very much. And I think I've done enough stammering for today. So uh, see you on Monday.